Chapter 40, Skellig. Mina's mother rested a wooden board on her knees. She smiled and put a pomegranate on the board. Pomegranate, she said. Isn't it a lovely word? She cut through the fruit with a kitchen knife. The red juice leaked out. The hundreds of seeds inside were exposed. It's what Persephone ate while she was waiting in the underworld, mum, her mum said. She gave a quarter of it to me and a quarter to Mina and took a quarter for herself. She gave us pins to pick the pips out with and we sat there nibbling away at the sweet flesh from the bitter seed. Look at all the life in this, she said. Every pip could become a tree and every tree could bear another hundred fruits and every fruit could bear another hundred trees and so on and so on to affinity. I picked the pips from my tongue with my fingers. Just imagine, she said, if every seed grew, there'd be no room in the world for anything but pomegranate trees. I licked my lips. Mina sat close to me. We watched the blackbirds returning time and time again to feed their young. I watched the sky and imagined Skellig flying away, a tiny black speck travelling over the endless curves of the world. The phone rang and my heart thudded and raced as Mina's mother went inside. But it wasn't Dad. I picked seed after seed from the fruit. How's your heart? whispered Mina. I tried to find the baby's gentle beat beneath my fast and frightened thud. I shook my head. She isn't there. The sun climbed through the sky and became coming warmer and warmer. Soon Mrs Dando cycled into the street and saw us sitting there. She bustled into the garden while the blackbirds squawked their warning calls from the rooftop and the fledglings scuttled into cover. Oh, it's such a lovely day, she said. She beamed at us. We're all missing you again, she said. Mina's mother gave her the final quarter of the pomegranate and she nibbled the seeds and giggled. Oh, pomegranates, she said. I've not had one of these since I was a girl of twelve. She told me about Leaky and Coot and all the others. They keep telling me, get Michael to come back. She gave me a new folder of work. There was a drawing of an open body with arrows pointing to its parts. Rasputin's note told me to write the missing names. Mina and I looked at the drawing together. Tibia, we said, fibula, sternum, clavicle, radius, ulna, kidneys, liver, lungs, heart and brain. And spirit jumping in and out, said Mina, never to be seen. Mrs Dando looked at her. I knew that Coot would have never talked to Mrs Dando about her. A daft monkey girl, he'd have said. The lass that sits on, like, a tr tr like a crow in the tree. The lass that's keeping him away from school. Miss Clarks had written, write another story like the last one, Michael. Something just as lovely. Let your imagination fly. I closed my eyes. I wanted to imagine nothing. The baby was dead. Skellig was gone. The world was left all ugly, cold and terrifying. The blackbird squawked and squawked while Mrs Dando told Mina's mother about what a great footballer I was and about how I loved having a daft time with the other boys. Mina's mother smiled. How's that baby? Mrs Dando said at last. I don't know, I whispered. Um, she's having an operation today, said Mina. Oh, poor little soul, said Mrs Dando. Yes, said Mina, and to be quite honest, Mrs Dando, the last thing Michael needs is to be troubled by petty things like football and school. Her mother sighed. Mina, she said. Well, said Mina, it's true, isn't it, Michael? I couldn't stand it. I went to sit on the front wall facing away from them. See, said Mina, see, you've upset him. And that was when Dad drove into the street and parked the car in front of me. He held the door open. I got in beside him. He put his arm around me. It's over, son, he said.